I'm embarking on an epic adventure. From spectacular natural landscapes to the busiest cities in the world. I to China I find this really very special indeed. <laughs> 我想了解绵延数千年的中华传统文化，如何持续影响并塑造了这个伟大的国家。I've really been looking forward to seeing this, and to truly understand the secrets of a country's soul, I think you need to immerse yourself in its art. 所以，我将从这儿开启我的探秘之旅。我来到上海探究中国艺术、贸易和规模化生产之间的古老联系。The world's busiest container port might seem a strange place to start a story about Chinese art, but with the exchange of goods, and this place handles something like 40 million shipping containers every year, comes an exchange of ideas. And here in China, the links between art and trade, culture, mass production, beauty and big business, they stretch back for centuries, even millennia. I remember when I was growing up eating every day out of a, a beautiful small blue and white china bowl that was decorated with this very delicate floral motif. I mean, it was nothing special, just a a knockoff, I guess, imitating the sort of thing commonly found in China. But for a young boy, this simple dish acted as a stimulant on the imagination, evoking a fantastical, faraway world. It was my first impression, really, of the Far East. That时的我并不知道，我其实是在用中国有史以来最成功的出口商品之一，来盛放早餐。它是高超的手工艺技术和市场营销实践的完美结合。坐落于人民广场的上海博物馆，拥有中国顶尖的古代艺术收藏，其中包括一个又一个展厅的珍贵瓷器。我想了解更多关于经典青花瓷的风格。The majority of them were made for export, for the Islamic market, and you know the cobalt comes from the Islamic world too, probably. So, so hang on, the cobalt is the mineral that's used? The mineral that gives the blue color of this porcelain, you know. This is called blue and... Chen Jie in the museum's Tao-Ci Yen-Jiu-Bu-Men. Why was it that there is a desire in the Middle East for dishes like this? 
This is part of their tradition to eat, you know, eat together. Communal eating. Yes, sitting on the floor and sharing food together. So the big dishes are perfect for that. Here's an example of Chinese potters in business marketing this product. Yes. For Middle Eastern customers. For the Middle East customers, of course. Middle East 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 Middle 明代后期的瓷器通常会用当时知名的中国符号、风景。甚至诗词来装饰。Sitting alone in the shady bamboo grove, playing the musical instrument and singing at the top of my voice. Deep in the forest, there's nobody else, or in bright moonlight shining on me. I love this idea that here's a silent mute object, but we're meant to imagine this man. Singing with gusto and abandon, in this poetic setting by himself in the moonlight. At this time, blue and white became a symbol of, you know, elegance. In the 16th century, a new foreign trade market sprang up. Chinese pottery was exported to Europe and Asia. Western traders were shocked by this unique gold piece, and called it "Black Silver." 这件作品并未再展，但陈女士专门将它从博物馆的仓库中调出来给我看。Can you recognize this one? It's strange phrase, armillary sphere. It's an yes, astrolabe, a navigation yes. tool. So this is a piece specially ordered for the Portuguese king. This kind of piece is called first. Orders in the West compare the this armillary uh, sphere with the real one. Mm -hmm. You can you can sense the difference. The letters don't really look like any letters I recognize. Yes, yes, because this is the first encounter of the West and China. So Chinese porters they do not understand Portuguese. When they are sent something to copy, they cannot recognize the letters. So this is at the very beginning of that whole explosion of this desire for blue and white porcelain in Europe. Yes, that's it. The first order. 两百多年来，大批工匠烧制的青花瓷被成吨的运往海外。不管欧洲的工匠如何费尽心思的尝试。他们仍然无法完美复制中国原版青花瓷的典雅外观、光泽和坚硬质地。I can see the words check-in everywhere, but somewhat naively, I thought the destinations might be in English as well. Um, Siam, I need to find the right check-in desk. I want to go to the Chinese workers how to learn the scale of production and the scale of trade that has an impact on the Chinese culture. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chinese 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 
到了位于中国西北的陕西省省会西安。我来这里探索，中国古代对大规模生产技术的掌握，如何影响其艺术和文化。带着这个使命，我来到了世界最壮观的考古发现之一——秦始皇兵马俑。In 1974, a group of farmers were digging a well in a parched field when they unearthed. A fragmentary clay figure, which had remained underground, undisturbed for 2,000 years. The terracotta army is one of the earliest examples of something we still associate with modern China. Highly skilled production on a colossal scale. 我获得了特别许可，能有机会体验行走在兵马俑阵中的感觉。As soon as you get down into the pit itself, it completely transforms the way you think about the terracotta army. Because at first glance, up above, you see these massed ranks of soldiers standing to attention for all eternity. It's a very eerie sensation. But when you're in among them, suddenly, instead of uniformity, you start to see glimpses of individuality. There's a sense here of an artisan's approach within that bigger concept of mass production. So someone has specialised in thinking of particular facial features, putting the cheekbones in a certain place, perhaps adding a beard, in other cases changing the shape of an eyebrow, and then you can find underneath some of the warriors a stamp, a stamp of approval, a stamp of quality control, telling you this piece was made in the imperial workshop, and this man is ready to guard the emperor for eternity. This one, this is artisan created. This is from Xianyang. 我想知道曾经为秦始皇陵墓工作的数以千计的工匠，如何制造出这么多高水准的兵马俑。考古学家李秀珍博士带我来到了陵墓研究部的幕后，来看他最新的发现。So it looks really precisely engineered and created. Yeah. So this each part, they were cast in a in a ceramic mold, fastened with two pins. We can see the two pins here. So and that's fixed in a wooden stock of the crossbow. So is this a a working trigger? Yeah, working triggers. This in Chinese character five. This is the number five. What's the significance、mm. of that? That means that's for the assembling sequence. An early example of a kind of assembly line. You are right. Qin Shi Huang Bing Ma Yong is China's most valuable treasure. 但是在这条两千年前的生产线上工作过的匠人们，所开发的技术却历经岁月变迁，至今仍历久弥新。我又回到了熙熙攘攘的上海，来学习中国最精美的工艺珍宝之一。丝绸制品。几千年来，丝绸生产的艺术一直作为中国的贸易秘密而受到保护。奢华的丝织品遍布世界各地，而精巧繁复的丝绸刺绣艺术，被认为是最受尊敬的艺术形式之一。
I must say, I find this utterly beguiling. There's a man on horseback approaching on a bridge, the swirls of the clouds above and all of the rock formations. If you look really closely, you see here quite an extraordinary innovation, and technically, it's virtuosic. But someone has created this using a needle, which have been used to imitate washes and brush strokes, different colours, light and dark, all of the painterly effects and repertoire have been summoned here using silk. It's quite astonishing, actually.故事家族的韩熙梦女士让我等凡人能更细致地欣赏韩熙梦女士的创新记忆 There's a whole range of different colours that are being used Perhaps ones which are not really detectable Because when you first look, it's got the shimmer It feels like a butterfly Yes And this is what, this, this helps you analyse how she's created it 她的画稿就是她的绣本 她画好以后直接绣在上面 所以她的画稿是绝本的 先绣一层然后他看整体效果然后他再补充再绣一层层层直到绣到满意为止就是蚕丝就是他的一个特性他可以折光所以当就是绣完了以后他会反射出一个亮的感觉一个鲜艳的一个色彩的感觉它的特点就是它敢不锈这条条水路与船只的水声徐挺和他的母亲成功经营着自己的高级丝绸品牌，专营当代丝绸制品，但同时他们也生产承袭了传统文化遗产的丝织品，并由受过传统苏绣训练的当地绣娘进行制作。it feels like someone is sitting at the front of an organ keyboard with pedals. Yeah. And there's someone else who's sitting up like in a kind of crow's nest. What are they doing then to create the silk? How does this work? Uh, the, the pattern you see uh, on the picture is decided by the lady upstairs. And uh, the color for the pat uh, pattern is decided by the lady sitting down. So basically, the person who's working here doesn't need to concentrate on which threads are raised at exactly, all. Yeah. They just concentrate on making sure the colour is yeah. deployed perfectly. What happens if you make mistakes? The whole thing gets ruined. <laughs> is this your mum? Yes. <laughs> Hello, hi, hi Alistair. Hello, how are you? you? Lovely to meet you. This is one piece of embroidery. Should that. This is Suzhou, as yeah. it appeared in the Ming Dynasty. Yeah. 
。这幅巨大的刺绣作品，是以明朝时期苏州当地一位画家的风景画为基础创作的。How long will it take to finish this? We need to do two years. We need to do it. First, we need to do it. Then, 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 we need to do it. Has your mum taught you the technique of Sioux embroidery? Oh, yeah. She always tries to get me into it. And it's interesting. Even though it's... The delicate work for a lady's hand, but um, you know, sometimes I try with it. When I was growing up, the phrase "made in China" it had certain connotations, signalling something definitely cheap, probably a little bit plasticky. More affordable than aspirational, but just think of all of those historical Chinese industries, and really they were industries manufacturing moon white Ming vases and elaborately patterned silks. Two examples of mass production that's also simultaneously artisanal and high end. Here in China, beauty and big business—they've always gone hand in hand. Next episode, I will explore technology. I will immerse myself in a very valuable Chinese landscape, and understand how the old Chinese landscape has influenced modern architecture. I will also study how to use modern hand-painted buildings to protect the most famous Chinese monuments.